Question number six from the June 2019 AQA Physics Combined Science Higher Year paper. This question is on the topic on motion. Figure nine shows a free body diagram for an airplane flying at a constant speed at a constant height. The speed of the airplane is much greater than the speed at which the airplane lands. So if they're saying that the speed of the airplane is much greater, that means it obviously needs to slow down. So explain how the forces need to change so the airplane can land. For it to land, it needs to reduce the lift. Weight you can't change in the airplane. So you can reduce the lift, which means the resultant force will be downwards. So the airplane can actually moving down. And in order to reduce the speed, you need to reduce the thrust and which will actually increase the air resistance as well. So <clears throat> the thrust decreases. So there's a resultant force in the opposite direction. Lift must decrease because weight stays the same. So it's a, there is a resultant force acting downwards. That would give you the four marks. Or you could say, let's say like, the air resistance or drag increases as speed decreases. So air resistance or drag is greater than the thrust. So weight is greater than the lift. next part question 6.2 the airplane lands at a speed of 80 meters per second so lands at a speed of 80 meters per second after landing the airplane takes 28 seconds that's the time to decelerate to a speed of 10 meters per second that's my final velocity initial velocity Calculate the mean resultant force on the airplane as it deceleration, as it de the mean resultant force on the airplane as it decelerates is 750,000 newton. Calculate the mass of the airplane. In order to calculate the mass of the airplane, you will need the equation F equals m a. Now, the force is given here. The mass is what you're trying to calculate. Acceleration, you have to work it out from the values that are given here. So let's find the acceleration first. Acceleration is the change in velocity divided by time. So that's final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time. So final velocity was 10 minus the initial velocity was 8 divided by 28. That's minus. 70 divided by 28. So, ignore the negative value for now. 70 divided by 28 gives me 2.5. So, the acceleration is minus 2.5 meters per second squared. Using that value in this equation, F equals m a the mass is equal to the force divided by the acceleration the force is 750000 divided by 2.5 so because it's decelerating the negative value and the acceleration also negative so those two will cancel off eventually 750,000 divided by 2.5. That's what gives me 300,000. So 300,000 kg. That's the end of question number six. I'll see you in question number seven.